We've spent the last two weeks outside Big Ben National Park exploring the beauty of this area in between work days and general RV life. <gasps> We head to our next location tomorrow, but before we go, we have one more Big Bend experience to check off our list. We're going to Mexico. This is the quickest international trip I've ever been on. <laughs> Obviously, you can't watch the news without hearing about the border crisis, cartels, or corrupt officials, so is it really safe to be crossing the border right now? We got all of like 30 seconds worth of instructions. Follow along as we take you to another country and chat about the risks that come with traveling, towing our home on wheels, and camping in the middle of nowhere where no one can hear you <laughs> scream. <laughs> You know how much we love getting up early, but the Boquillas border crossing is located at the far end of the park, right on the Rio Grande, and has very limited parking. This parking lot is completely full, and the port just opened. Yeah, it's 9 a.m. I don't think you would want to come any later than 9. <laughs> In preparing for this trip, we were curious, what are the 10 most dangerous towns in Texas? Do any border towns make the list? Surprisingly, only a few. And with there being so few incidents at this particular crossing, we felt comfortable enough to visit and see what Mexico was really like. So it's only open a couple days a week, a few days a week, and you of course need your passport or passport cards to get across. And the most important thing is knowing when it closes, which I think is four o'clock. It seemed like something you should know because if you don't make it back in time, uh, it's kind of a swim back. Our orientation from the National Park Service was short. We got all of like 30 seconds worth of instructions. Just like the walk down to the river where you can choose to wade across for free or take a boat for $5 per person. I thought we were gonna be rowing across a decently wide <laughs> no, portion of the gonna river. No, they're gonna be pulling us. <laughs> they're just gonna walk us across. <laughs> of course, we opted for the full Boquillas experience, including riding horses into town for $15 each. Come on. Let's go. Why are we going into the bushes? Hey there, horsey. Come on, no snacks. Why do I keep having to wait for you? Because my horse is a lazy butt. You are not listening. You're falling behind again. Come on, let's go. I don't know how to do this. Let's just hope I don't fall. <sighs> Nicely done. <sighs> Thanks that for being patient. That didn't look too no, bad. No, it wasn't too bad. All right, so where do we uh, go with these horses? Come on. I guess we just leave it. Come here. Since Boquillas is located in a protected area, you need to go straight to immigration when you arrive in town to pay a small entrance fee. We have to register our entry. Let's make sure we're official. <laughs> yes, sneaking into Mexico is not on our itinerary <laughs> no. for the day. Can you smell my dog? To show your bracelet, all official. I'm official. We walk through town perusing vendors and shops along the way while greeting all the dogs. Hi. Look at your eyes. Oh. Then we stop for a bite to eat at a restaurant with a very specific menu. We had three choices for the menu. So there is it was no like menu. it was goat on barbecue. Yeah, which, which was, uh, I don't know what Spanish name that was. I forgot what they said. Yeah. Yes. Cheese enchiladas, which he, which, which is, is what he I'm getting. getting. Okay. And I'm getting chicken tamales. Yep. Very good. Whew. Horse going He's by. Going real fast. Oh, we oh. got one that lost its rider. We, we have a rogue horse. I think you're going the wrong way, buddy. You may notice that we are walking back <laughs> to try to save a little bit of money. We spent a lot in just two, just hours, two hours over here. So we spent $10 to get across the river. Yep, $5 each. We spent $30 to take the horses up to the town. $15 each. $4, uh, $8 at immigration. Yep, $4 each. One souvenir for $5. And then we bought um, lunch. lunch for $24, including tip. Yeah, so. You, you crunch all the math. Yeah, crunch all the numbers. Uh, that comes to $77 in just two hours. We realized that if we uh, took the horses back that we were gonna cross the threshold into triple digits, and we decided yeah. to get our exercise instead. Yeah, so that'll just give you an estimate of the cost if you decide to take your family over. Ooh. You good? Yep, I think so. Okay. Time for the long journey back. Yep. Gonna cross countries. Back on US soil. That feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> we got back through. <laughs> I was actually a little shocked, like, 
the way across, the way back. Very no, casual. No bag checks, nothing. no nothing. But yeah, it's the most casual border crossing I've ever had. If you're already down here visiting this end of the park, there's one more stop that you don't want to miss, the Rio Grande Nature Trail, which offers a beautiful overlook of the river, and the hike is less than a mile. Okay, our overall impressions of, of the park loved it. The, the park, park is loved amazing. It. Of Boquillas, do it. Do it, because I think it's a fun experience. But I would say it's not like what we expected. The horse ride or burrow ride, that was the enjoyable part. Like going across and then riding the burrow to the town, I would do that again. I think I was just really excited that I got to be in Mexico, yes. like in another country, and I literally could just walk there. I think that was a really cool experience. In terms of like safety, we both felt totally fine. I feel like this is a very American tourist experience. And the only place where I felt a little funny, not unsafe, just a little funny was like, I wasn't sure how far into the town to go before you start seeing like just people's homes and houses rather than like the market area. So I don't know, I felt more comfortable staying in like the main market, main street area because I just wasn't sure like how much we should wander. <laughs> Goodbye, Big Ben. I don't think we did nearly enough stuff here. No, we're going to have to come back. Well, it is hard to believe this, but we have been here for almost two weeks and we are leaving out tomorrow morning. And I don't know if you know about this, but we're really bad at getting up early, getting on the road and heading out. But tomorrow we have to travel almost 400 miles, which means it is not an option. We have to be out of here at sunup or we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be arriving after dark yet again i'm not going to let that happen i'm going to actually get as much as i can out here put away tonight so that tomorrow morning we can actually like be hooking up before the sun rises i've got all the main picking up done i got the truck here i would have hitched up but we would have been so unlevel tonight if there is one thing that can really delay you on a travel day Sometimes by as little as a half an hour, sometimes as long as an hour or an hour and a half if you run into a line, and that is dumping and refilling. So, the dump station, you can't see it because of the sunshine, but it's literally right up there behind me. I'm just going to dump all our grays, dump all our blacks, refill our freshwater tank, and uh, that way tomorrow we won't have to worry about stopping anywhere along the way. Well, that'll just about do it. Tomorrow morning, all I've got is the power cord and Starlink. I think we should be able to do it. We left at 8.30. 30, which so we, missed, we were shooting for eight. Yeah, we missed sunrise by a ha technical <gasps> sunrise by a half an hour. <sighs> but I said we don't have like many stops today. We nope. have one very touristy attraction that will take you to. It's we're just gonna, do gonna some be like shopping. You'll see later on <laughs> what he means, but it'll just be like five minutes, and then we got to pick up some pet food from Petco that we already ordered to try to again save time and not have to do a lot of stopping off as we go. Did we tell you where we're going? I don't think we have. I don't know. We're going to White Sands National Park, which will be park number 44. We have a bucket list of hitting all 63 national parks in our lifetime. So that will be exciting to check another one off the list and we're going to see some friends I was going to say, we did say we were going to meet up with some friends. We haven't told people who yet, but they're just going to have to We'll have to keep watching and find out, but I think, I think you're going to you're gonna like there, there's some people in the comments that are gonna already know. <laughs> We're here, the parking lot for the shopping plaza. Speaking of which, it is uh, 11.51. We should hit up the food court while we're here. I'm hungry. Need some new shoes? <laughs> and a purse. <laughs> in the middle of the desert. It's 
very windy out here. <laughs> but from what we understand, this is like an art piece that someone was doing to make fun of consumerism and, and to they, make fun of Prada, but Prada actually provided the stuff for yeah, them. They, to the food court, also known as <laughs> the RV. Which, by the way, if you want to visit this place, it's on Route... Wait, I forgot what I you told me. I think it's Route 60. Route 60. I'm going to have to... Hang on, let me, let me look this up, just so that we're not giving wrong information. It is Route 90. Leftover burrito bowl. Leftover burrito bowl. What are you having? I probably will have the sandwich. What a shocker. I know this looks really that looks gross, disgusting. but it's a burrito bowl with dairy-free cheese sauce. Look who's in the driver's seat. No, not Trinity. <laughs> if you watched our last video, Kaylin was the run under the gun to get our newsletter out in time. This time, it's me. I have driven the RV maybe four times in the last five Some, years. Somewhere around there. Something around that. The only thing I don't like about it, and I think this is specific to like trailers or fifth wheels, is you cannot use the rear view mirror. You have to use the side mirrors because, well, <laughs> it's I mean, pointless. <laughs> the, the rear view mirror is good at making sure that the RV is still there. <laughs> Other than I that, think I'd notice it. if it flew away. So this is also going to be your first experience driving with any sort of significant wind. Oh, we are dealing didn't with think about that. 20 mile an hour, at the moment, crosswinds. Mm. All right, we're changing drivers on an exit ramp. <laughs> go, 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 go! All right, nobody behind us. Nope. <laughs> you can see all the specks of dirt from the wind. Oh, wait. The wind is getting crazier. I feel like this is a good segue into road safety. <laughs> it is super gusty out. I do not typically, I, I don't like driving in wind in general, but this, this crosswind is, I'm guessing we're getting 20 to 25 mile an hour gusts, maybe stronger. Well, when you take your house on the road and it's like high profile, it's just more susceptible to the sway. And so it's just, it's not, it's you're definitely one, more stressed out. Yeah, it's it's definitely one of the risks that we take as RVers. The fact that, you know, everybody takes a risk when they go driving down mm -hmm. the road, but we take our We have home, our home, like, like almost 90, everything we own. 90% of our possessions. And, you know, if you get in an accident, that's a, there it goes. That's a problem. Mm -hmm. Speaking of risks we take, um, I think says four miles to empty, so I think I'm going to need to pull over <laughs> soon. And How come we didn't feel, well, fill up in El Paso? Because all the gas stations required like exiting and side roads, and I wasn't sure if they were good for RVs or not. And so I was hoping when we got onto this road, there'd be a gas station like right there, and there wasn't, which is why we have the spare six yeah. gallons of gas in the back so that we can get an extra 60 miles whenever we need it. What happened? I got diesel all over my knee. Oh no. It is crazy out there, Trin. That should get us 50 to 60 more miles. How much further do we have to go? 10. Oh, you smell. I know, I smell really bad of diesel. Oh, it smells like a gas station I got, here. I got more on my <laughs> pants when I was putting it back together. If we die, of yeah, chemicals. If, if we get in an accident, you I'm... know what happened. Although, no one's gonna know because no one will see this footage. Exactly. For seeing the video, we survived. Or at least I did since I'm the editor. Hopefully, that's not the gas station. It looks a little lifeless. I think it's actually right up here. And they've got diesel. Three, oh, 394. Ooh, that's pretty good price. We haven't paid that. We haven't paid the low four for a little bit. Not now. for a while. I think this is the tight. Wow. Oh, that is tight. Wow, that is tight. Oh, man. Whoa. How are we feeling about this? Um, <laughs> I wish I was coming at it from the other direction, but we can, we got this, but it is tight. Yeah. How are you doing over there? Good. We got about a foot between. Because I can't see the mirror. Oh, my word. I wasn't sure about that one. <laughs> that was really tight. This road is decent, but that was, that was... What did you think, Trin? 
Well, why is her ear up, like that? Ear? <laughs> with the boondocking style, that's even like an added extra risk besides just taking your RV down the highway, you know, where you can get in an accident. We also take this RV, we've beat the heck out of this RV over the past five years, taking it up and down forest roads, through cattle grates like that where you're just like not sure. We actually had one place where we pulled into that I'm thinking of in Utah where the oh, RV yeah, like- yeah, it was tipping. Ooh. I thought for <laughs> sure we were gonna lose it. So it's not like you're just pulling into a nice little campground that has a flat pad for you to be in and everything's paved. No, boondocking. It comes with its own set of risks. Mm -hmm. Wow, there are a lot there of There are a lot of campers. Keep coming. There you go, you're good. What's going on? Well, you remember that pop? What pop? This morning when you, we were doing the yeah. slide. I think the, uh, look, I should not be able to shove this side. Watch, down there. <gasps> Uh-oh. So there's a bar that connects the two and it has failed. If you want to push it the rest of the way out, I'll push this in and Is we'll it, get it out. It's not going to break anything more? It shouldn't. I mean, it's already broken, so. We've like, almost never had slide issues. I won't know until I get under the RV and take a look. Oh, there's the problem. We got this square tube that connects the two pulleys. It's connected solidly to the other pulley. I can't twist it, but here is this pulley. And as you can see, where it connects right there is completely shredded. I'm gonna have to get this pulley off so we can take a look at it and see if there's anything we can do. The backside is covered. <laughs> I'm filthy. This was all somehow one piece before. And then that went into the square tubing and that was what turned it. So I feel like my next option is to get a new RV <laughs> <laughs> with all that YouTube money we're making. Um, I think our next option is to find someone who can weld and they, we need them to weld this on. But my concern is that like, there's such little metal here that a weld might not handle the torque. Hey there, is this JB's welding? Yeah, no, I'll stop by today. There we go. Ah, oh, bummer. What happened? The weld broke. You're kidding me. Nope. But my concern is that like, a weld might not handle the torque. So here's where we're at. The weld broke. I'm now going to try to take this apart and see if I can remove the pin. And then I'm going to take a quick drive down to Tractor Supply and then maybe some auto parts stores, Lowe's, Home Depot. Thankfully, all those exist around here. And I'm going to see if I can find a pin that will work as a replacement. If I can find the pin, this becomes the harder piece. I don't know that these type of square pieces exist. Uh, without being specially made. So if that is not the case, if I cannot find a square piece that matches this in any way, shape or form, I'm actually gonna have to dry, try to buy a drill bit and drill that out. Well, he is at the store. Let me show you around our new boondocking spot because it's pretty nice. This is called Lake Holloman Dispersed Camping. You can find it on Campendium Free to Stay here. Pretty open area once you get past that cattle grade. That was really tight, but we have some mountains in the background. And then our view out our big back window is this lake. And I'm gonna say lake in quotes because it's basically a water treatment pond. So non-potable water, no boating, no swimming, no drinking. In regards to cell service, Verizon does work well, but that's kind of our last resort because it is a limited hotspot to turn our phone into that hotspot. T-Mobile's a little bit iffy, so we did have to pull out the Starlink again. I think 
it I think our billing thing is like in another week or so so we'll probably have to pay for it for another month we try not to because it is $150 a month however we are on the Rome plan which means like if we don't need it for a month like if we're on the East Coast then we can just turn it off and we don't have to pay for it but for here Starlink seems to work the best if you're an aviation nerd like Joseph, you'll be happy to know that this boondocking spot is located right next to an Air Force base. And of course, the biggest perk of them all is being able to camp next to our friends Craig and Victoria from Wild RV Life. All right, so here's the new plan. So yes, this is a super specialty part. So I am replacing it with a bolt. I'm gonna pound this out. Try to cut a notch in this. And then that will be the new pin. All right, you ready for the next moment of truth? Is that like putting the slide in and out? Yeah, go in and right. I'll holler at you. Do it like a foot at a time. Trinity's so confused. So can you just like shove I this should be able to, back? But I have a plan. Okay. But yes, the bolt has that square piece on top. There's just a little bit of play. And so that, you know, the gear starts turning and the gear gets like an eighth of a turn before the square tube starts turning. And so that play means this side doesn't, that side starts and then this side starts behind. I'm going to take the piece off, not today weld that together so that then there's no play. But I'm done for the day. Yeah, we'll do that that one in another episode. Is this all metal over here? All that? Yeah, don't stick your fingers Don't touch it. <laughs> when it comes to boondocking, some people might think it's a little unsafe because generally you're staying in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes there's not people around or maybe there's sketchy people around. I was gonna say, that's not to say that boondocking can't be unsafe because we have gone into some boondocking spots where we have trusted our gut and yeah. drove in and driven right back like, out. Sometimes you just get a really bad feeling about it, especially if it's sort of turned into a homeless camp or if you hear like there's a lot of break-ins in the area, obviously you don't stay there. Even Walmarts have felt a little sketchy. Like we have, even though it's been, remember that one time in the we were traveling in the dark, we got to a Walmart and it just didn't feel safe. Yep. And so we ended up at like a $40 night campground yep. just to make sure that we were good. We also have stayed at a few boondocking spots that have then turned out to be sketchy. Like it didn't feel that way when we first got there. <laughs> I'm thinking of the one outside Phoenix where we heard dynamite go off. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that one was fun. And I actually thought of another one, and that was we, it wasn't that it was unsafe necessarily, but we went to a boondocking spot outside of Mount Shasta. And we had people doing drum circles, walking around shirtless at three in the morning. And I tried to talk to them and they're like, sorry, and just kept doing their thing. So there's a lot of, a lot of various activity going on that we just didn't want to be a part of. So we moved the next morning. I don't know if it was unsafe, but it was sketchy. And the thing is you can feel unsafe in campgrounds. Like I know we have felt that way. Campgrounds are supposed to be like more safe or more secure supposedly, but it's really, it, it's another risk that we take and we just rely, like Joseph said, on our gut feeling, leave if it doesn't feel right and make sure we just try to be as safe as possible. But why do we take that risk? Because you get epic scenery, you mm -hmm. get epic night skies. You don't look out your back window right into someone else's RV. Yeah. It's totally worth it. So one of the things that we thought about getting, especially after working the gate garden gig where we had lights and we have motion sensors that set an alarm off, is kind of combining the two and getting motion lights. I've seen a few RVers that have them outside. You stick them by your front porch or by your vehicle, and it's just an added element of safety. The thing is, when you're boondocking, most likely the things that are going to be set them off are like coyotes and random wild animals. So maybe we need one that also has a camera attached oh, to it so we so can cool. see like what we, happens. We need to get a field camera. I bet we can get some really awesome That pictures. would be really neat. That's gross. Aren't you glad we cleaned the sinks yesterday? Mm -hmm. Bad thing about boondocking is that I've gone through an enormous amount of water. I know, we're supposed to be on water conservation mode. This is looking good. I'm glad your hands aren't greasy anymore. <laughs>
So you kind of have to decide where your line is. And we've drawn our line a little riskier than some people might draw theirs, but it's all where you feel comfortable. And we feel comfortable dealing with situations as they come. And we feel much more comfortable a lot of times doing some of the things we talked about like boondocking than we do doing the safe option. The thing is the same things that could potentially happen to us might happen to someone who lives in a sticks and bricks house and drives the same route to work every day. And it's like, you just can't let fear run your life. I think that's the biggest thing is we have agreed to take on this risk of RV life. And, and I feel like that kind of goes to the core of why we did RV life yeah. actually is we decided we didn't want to live for not live for the future, but you're not guaranteed right. retirement. Right, we don't you're know not... if we're going to reach retirement. We don't know if we're going to get a diagnosis. We have no idea, and so that's why we're trying to do this now. All right, well, we are going to eat dinner, and then the thing that I didn't tell you about this boondocking spot is it's only 15 minutes from White Sands National Park, so we're going to go. How often do we get a boondocking spot that's I know, like within so 15 close. minutes? Because at Big Bend, we were like an hour and a half outside of some of the things that we want to do, but we're going to do a sunset hike with Craig and Victoria and just have a fun evening. So we'll see you in the next video. Bye.